In this video, I aim to go over a simple um, insurance utility problem uh, in microeconomics. So, suppose, a, so first of all, before we actually begin, I'm just going to outline two um, essentially formally that we need. So, uh, we have the basic consumer problem. So, if a consumer has a wealth of W, uh, probability alpha he will lose Z, so he loses the amount Z, which is less than W. He can buy insurance that would pay him Q. So basically, the insurance company has to pay out Q pounds or Q uh, dollars, USD or whatever, in the event of loss. Um, the cost of the insurance is pi Q. So obviously, that is the money that he would have to pay. He is the consumer in order to purchase that insurance. So the consumer's problem is to maximize his utility. Well, I say utility, it's really expected utility. Now, expectation is you know we generally define expectation to be the sum so this is for a discrete distribution obviously um, of the probability that certain events will happen multiplied by the value um, that is returned when each re when each event happens and that's essentially what we have here so just to give a little brief overview of the formula very quickly we want to maximize the expected utility for the consumer now his utility function u is dependent upon w minus z that is the essentially the profit that he will have so w minus z um, plus q and that's plus q the amount that he's paid take away the um, money that he would have to pay to the insurance company this is essentially expected profit okay that's essentially the utility operating on profit, okay, and this happens in the event that he loses. So if he loses money, right, so that happens with probability alpha, that is your probability alpha <coughs> that he loses. And then the um, situation or the profit is W, that's money in, okay, that's his wealth take away z that's the money that he loses we've defined it as the money he loses we have to take away pi q because that's the cost of the insurance so this is all now that's money that's coming out but then he gets paid plus q by the insurance company and all of this you know this loss happens with probability alpha we also have the other scenario the other possibility the one minus alpha case where he does not lose now in this case um, the money that he will have, so you know, you could call this the um, the total profit, if you will, for the situation, is going to be his wealth, and then simply take away the cost of the insurance because he doesn't have any loss here. You know, he hasn't lost. This is why the probability is one minus alpha. That's the complement of alpha. Now, in all honesty, you don't really need to understand all of that. You just need to know the formula point is you want to maximize this this is his expected utility we want to maximize it and that's really all you've got to know um, I'm not sure but I'm not sure if they give you the formula so it's good to understand it and then the insurance company's profit is simply going to be or its expected profit I should say expected profit well there's a chance or there's a one minus alpha chance that he does not lose, okay? If alpha is a chance that he loses, he does not lose with chance one minus alpha. There's a one minus alpha chance that he's not gonna have a loss. Um, well, not, not that he doesn't have a loss, no, that he, one minus alpha chance that he does not lose. That's, that he, there's a one minus alpha chance he does not lose anything, okay? Um, and in that case, the insurance company is only the insurance company is only going to gain the pi q. Well, the insurance company is going to gain the pi q that the customer has given them. Um, but on the other hand, it could be that the customer does lose, and if that's the case, he's going to expect that money back from the insurance company. Um, so they will add to their amount of money the insurance company they will get the pi q that he has paid them the consumer but they will then lose a q that they need to pay out to him and basically then you've got these two expected utility functions and what you want to do in the first case is max so the first part of this problem is maximize the 
Um, basically, you want to maximize the customer's expected utility. And the second bit, we want to find the premium rate that maximizes the profit utility function. Let's pay out to consumer. So without further ado, let's make a start. So for A, for a given rate pi, well, actually, let's, let's try and read, let's read the question first. That would help. So let's get my highlighter. So a farmer can make a profit of a thousand pounds if there is no damage to his crop. But if there is damage, then his profit is only three hundred pounds. The probability of a crop getting damaged is zero point two five, so that would be our alpha. And um, so that would be our alpha. And the farmer's utility function is u is is natural log or log y, where y is profit. The farmer can purchase insurance against profit loss q. Uh, at premium rate pi. <coughs> right, so for part A, um, the assumption that I'm making for part A is that we want to basically maximize the expected profit of the consumer. So what we're going to do there, if I look here, so yeah. So what that means here is that we basically want to do this first form. We want to maximize that so i'm going to say that first of all my utility function my, ex my expected utility is going to be this so it's going to be you know the alpha u w minus z business that business there so alpha let me determine my terms first alpha is 0 0.25 uh now he can make a profit of a thousand pounds if there's no damage so i'm going to call that w w is essentially the wealth thousands and if there is damage, his profit's only 300. So that means Z has got to be 300. Um, not Z is not 300, sorry. Z is 700 because, you know, if we assume that he loses money um, and his profit is then only 300, he's lost 700 from the 1,000. W minus Z is 300. Okay, so we can now substitute these values into the first... Um, that's not an equation, but the first expression for expected utility for expected utility. So we can say the expected utility for the consumer expected utility for the consumer is going to be um, so we have alpha. Now alpha is 0 0.25. So that is going to be 0 0.25. And then it's going to be u. So before I start substituting in what they mean for you, I'm just going to put u of, right, then it is the w minus z. Well, w minus z is just 1,000 take away 700, which is 300, the profit, uh, minus pi q plus q plus 1 minus alpha. Well, 1 minus 0 0.25 is 0 0.75. And then I've got U of W, which again is a thousand um, minus pi Q. So we have a thousand minus pi Q there. So that is the expected utility. And the aim now is to maximize that. Um, well, the aim now is to maximize this or find the uh, the value of um, Q, which will maximize that, basically, or find the um, yeah. So we want to find the value of Q that maximizes that, and to do that, we are going to find. We are basically going to solve. Um, so if I call my expected utility function here, if I call this E of Q and pi, to maximize this, we are going to solve DE by DQ is equal to zero. Basically, and I say solve it, we're going to solve that in terms of pi. Okay. 
because again, if you differentiate uh, with respect to Q, set that equal to zero, you will find all the critical points. So I'm going to find DE by DQ. So I just need to have my differentiation. So, well, before I do that, I'm going to actually remember that U here is log, log Y. So I'm going to, instead of U, I'm going to replace that with log. So I'm going to do 0.25 log 300 minus pi Q plus Q, because that's just the profit, assuming that he, um, his crop is damaged plus 0.75 log 100 minus pi q. Right, so what I'm going to do now is simply uh, differentiate with respect to q. Now, before we do that, it might be useful to remember what happens when we differentiate log. So if I have y is equal to log of x, well, natural log, that means dy by dx, so if I differentiate with respect to x, that just gives me 1 over x. And if I want to differentiate, um, you know, if I have, let's say, a harder one, if I've got y is equal to log of, I don't know, uh, 1 minus 2x, to find dy by dx, we differentiate what we have in the bracket first, which is just going to give me minus 2. You take that and then you times by 1 over, not x, but 1 over what you have in that bracket. So it will be 1 over 1 minus 2x. So here that would be minus 2 over 1 minus 2x. So we could write that like this, minus 2 over 1 minus 2x. That would be our answer there. So we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to differentiate with respect to um, q. So I'm going to say DE, let me change it back to black. So I'm going to say DE, and the reason I'm using this curly D is because there are two variables, and I'm basically fixing pi, um, and I want to see um, it's Q that changes, basically, with respect to um, this. So I'm going to do DE by DQ, so I differentiate term by term. The 0 0.25 gets carried forward. Right. I'm differentiating this first. Right. I differentiate my inside function, the function inside the brackets first. So if I do that, I'm going to get, right, 300 will go to zero because if I differentiate a constant, I get naught. Minus pi q, well, if I differentiate, say, 2x, I get 2. So here I'm going to get minus pi. I just get the constant coming forward. If I differentiate q on its own, that's just 1. So I'm going to have plus 1. Right, fantastic. Now, the second bit I'm going to have, well, I can't add yet. I've done the, the inner function. I need to then divide by everything in that bracket. So I've got 300 minus pi q plus q. That's my first term differentiated. Then the second term is going to have 0.75 at the front. Inner function is going to be minus pi when I differentiate it, because the 100 goes to 0, minus pi. And then that's going to go over 100 minus pi. Because again, it's just, you know, over the function of the bracket. 100 minus pi q, sorry. That's dE by dQ. And we basically need to solve dE by dQ is equal to 0. And we need to solve that for q. So I'm just going to go on to my next page. So we want to solve this for Q. So I'm going to say DYDQ. So one th first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to write 0 0.25 as one quarter. Just makes that fraction a bit easier to deal with. And that pi minus pi plus one, that's just one minus pi. So that first fraction I can write as one minus pi over four, because that 0 0.25 is one quarter bracket 300 minus pi q plus q and i'm just going to take out a factor of q because i just think that's more natural so i've got plus q times one minus pi i just taken out a factor of q so that is that term then i've got plus uh, 
three, not plus. I've got a minus pi here. Now, plus times a minus is a minus. So I've got minus 0.75 pi, which I can write as minus three pi over four. 0.75 is three quarters. And then I have 100 minus pi q there. Now, again, I want to solve dE by dQ equals zero. So that means all of this is equal to zero. So I have this equal to zero. Now, I know that when I saw you last week, what I did at this stage was, was basically multiply everything by four bracket 300 plus Q minus Q1 minus pi, then multiplied everything by four 100 minus pi Q. I think what is neater is to take this entire fraction over to the other side of the equation. I think that is neater. Now, what I'm basically doing there is I am adding 3 pi over 4 bracket 100 minus pi q to both sides. So I'm going to end up with, on the left, 1 minus pi over 4 bracket 300 plus q bracket 1 minus pi is equal to 3 pi over 4 bracket 100 minus pi q. Right, because when I add anything to zero, I just get that thing. Okay, you know, if I do two plus zero, I get two, three plus zero, I get three, and so on. Now, what I'm going to do, and I think it'll probably be helpful, I should have done a margin at the start, really. I'm now going to cross multiply. So, when I have two fractions that are equal to each other, what I can essentially do is multiply both sides by the denominator on the left. So I can basically bring that denominator up to the right. Different color would be helpful. And bring the denominator on the right up to the left. Remember, there should be brackets there. All I've done there is I've multiplied both sides by the left denominator and then multiplied both sides by the right denominator. And what that will leave me with is one minus pi bracket 4 bracket 100 minus pi q is equal to 3 pi times 4 times 300 plus q bracket 1 minus pi. And what I'm going to do now, just to simplify things, is divide both sides by 4, just to get rid of those 4s. So I now have an expression of 1 minus pi bracket 100 minus pi q. That shouldn't be 100. Oh, I'm very sorry, but that. that shouldn't be 100. That should be 1,000. That should be 1,000. Let me change that now. Yeah, that's a good thing I noticed that. Could have noticed it earlier, that should be a thousand throughout. Yeah, so we have one minus pi bracket a thousand minus pi q is equal to three pi bracket three hundred plus q bracket 1 minus pi. There we go. And basically the aim now is to get, so I'll just read red, the aim now is to get Q on its own. We want Q to be the subject of this um, equation, subject of this formula, get Q on its own. That's what it means to solve this for Q. Um, so to do that, I'm just going to expand first. So I'm going to expand the brackets on the left with FOIL. I've got 1 times 1,000, 1,000. 1 times minus pi q, minus pi q. Minus pi times 1,000, that's minus 1,000 q. And then I've got minus pi times minus pi q. But the thing is, a minus times a minus is a plus. So I actually have plus pi times pi, pi squared pi squared q. I'm just going to check my notes there. For that, uh, 1,000 minus pi q. Yeah. yeah, brilliant. And that equals, right, 3 pi. I'm just going to expand this bracket. I've got 3 pi times 300. That is going to be 900 pi. 
3 times 3 is 9, obviously. And I'm going to have plus 3 pi q bracket 1 minus q, 1 minus pi. Okay, this times 3 pi by q, 1 minus pi. Um, so I'm going to carry on. I'm going to get q on its own, obviously. So I'm going to take out a factor of q on the left where I can. Um, I do not like that 1,000 floating around. No, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. So basically, I'm going to simplify the left first. So I've got minus pi q. Okay, so I'm just going to basically try and get all of the Qs on one side and all the numbers on the other. So I've got 900 pi on the right, 3 pi Q, 1 minus pi on the right. Um, I've got minus pi Q, minus 1000 Q, and plus pi squared Q here. So I'm going to try, I'm going to move everything on the left over to the right by swapping signs, basically. I'm adding pi Q to both sides, adding 1000 Q, adding, taking away pi squared Q. So on the left then, I'm only going to have 1000. But on the right then, I'm going to have 900 pi plus 3 pi 1 minus pi q. I'm just going to write the q at the end here. It's a bit easier, a bit neater uh, at the end. Then plus 1,000 q plus pi q. Take away pi squared q. Now I'm going to write, I'm going to take out a factor of Q on the right. So I have 1,000 equal to uh, that 900 pi. That doesn't actually have a Q in it. Why have I, why have I done that? Sorry. Um, I'm going to... Ah, uh, thousand. Oh my gosh, that should be a thousand pi. That's not a mistake. Sorry about that. So that should be a thousand pi. So that actually means that I don't have a thousand. We have a thousand pi here. Right. So that means that I have one thousand is one thousand nine hundred pi. Uh, plus q bracket 3 pi 1 minus pi. Let's take out a factor of q. Plus pi, because obviously I've got pi q minus pi squared. So what I'm finally going to do is subtract 1,900 pi from both sides. <clears throat> so I have 1,000 minus 1,900 pi is equal to q bracket and then i've got all this stuff in here so i'm going to expand the bracket i've got 3 pi minus 3 pi squared plus pi minus pi squared um, and now i'm just going to basically write q I'm, I'm just going to swap the left and right hand side so i've got q bracket i'm just going to simplify in here 3 pi plus pi 4 pi minus 3 pi squared take away pi squared minus 4 pi squared is equal to 1,000 minus 1,900 pi. Then all I need to do now is divide both sides by what I've got in this bracket, this 4 pi minus 4 pi squared business. And that will leave me with Q equal to 1,000 minus 1,900 pi over 4 pi minus... I'm going to take out a factor here, 4 bracket pi minus pi squared. Now, you might be wondering, well, the denominator, the denominator does not look as it should. Well, the first thing I can do is divide the top and the bottom of the fraction by 4. So on the bottom, the 4 cancels. On the top, 1,000 divided by 4. You can do that on the calculator if you want. You know, that's going to be 250. Now, 1,900 divided by 4, that's going to be 475. And I can just show you that here. 475, so I've got 250 minus 475 pi over, and we can take out a factor of pi on the bottom to give me pi bracket 1 minus pi, which is exactly the expression 
that you would expect from the solutions. Um, but in all honesty, I think they would accept anything that Q is equal to. As long as Q is in terms of pi, I don't see how they can take marks away. But that's basically Q. That is the um, <clears throat> so that is the insurance. That's how much insurance he'll buy for a given rate pi, assuming that we're maximizing his expected utility. And then part B, uh, suppose there's only one insurance room. This actually links to part A. Find the premium rate pi hat, or pi bar, I should say, sorry, pi bar that maximizes the firm's expected profit. So this is just another um, maximization problem. But this time we need to use the second formula where we look at the insurance company's profit. So this time we need to do the derivative of a different function. So we have... Yeah, here we go. So I'm going to have the insurance company's profit. I'm going to write that as a formula. So, or the insurance company's expected profit, it should be. So here we go. I'm going to have to try and rearrange my screen a little bit. So insert. Okay, so what we can do now, uh, we want to work out now is the profit for the company. So we know what the profit of the company is going to be one well one minus alpha is three quarters so i'm going to have three quarters pi q plus one quarter pi q minus q so i can expand that bracket on the right and say i've got three quarters pi q plus one quarter pi q minus one quarter q now well, three quarters pi q plus a quarter pi q is one whole pi q. So I've got pi q plus uh, one quarter q. And that is the formula for the company's expected profit, which I'm just going to call y of pi q. But we can substitute q that we worked out earlier into this formula. So I end up with y of just pi equal to, well, first of all, let me just take out a factor of q in here. So I've got q times pi plus a quarter. That'll make it easier to work with. I'm subbing in q from earlier into this. So I have 250 minus 475 pi over pi bracket 1 minus pi all times by q pi plus a quarter. Sorry about that. That's a minus. Um, right, so this is our um, expression for y of pi, the company's profit. So I have y of pi equal to, right, 250 minus 475 pi bracket pi minus a quarter over pi bracket 1 minus pi. And what we can use at this, what we notice at this stage is that we have something divided by something else, a quotient basically. So we need to remember something called the quotient rule because our aim to maximize to maximize y of pi, I need to work out what dy by d pi equals zero. So I need to basically do dy by d pi equals zero and solve for pi, and that will give me uh, pi bar. So um, what I need to do now is just recognize that I've got a quotient. So if I have some function little y equal to u of x over v of x, then if I work out y prime, which is my derivative, you know, my dy by dx, then that's going to be um, v u prime take away u v prime over v squared. So in this case, um, 250 minus 475 pi bracket pi minus a quarter is essentially my u and pi bracket 1 minus pi is my v. So I need to work out u dash, v dash and v squared. I need to work these three things out first. So first of all, I'm just going to expand the top so I have u. So that's going to be 250 pi minus, right, 250 over 4, that is 1, 2, 5, over 2, which I believe is 62.5. Check that, 250 over 4. 
minus 62.5. minus 475 pi squared and then 475 over 4 plus 118.75 pi that is u um, and if I just simplify that so I have 250 Plus 118.75, 368.75. So I have 368.75 pi minus 475 pi squared minus 62.5. That's u. And then um, I need to have u dash, so u dash is just the derivative of this, which is just 368.75 minus, right, 2 times 475 is 950, 950 pi, if I differentiate 62.5 I get naught. Then I need to do v dash, so v dash, well, first of all, if you don't mind, let me just simplify v, so v is just pi minus pi squared. So that means that v dash is just 1 minus 2 pi. And then finally, v squared is going to be, well, this is the easiest one, really. It's just going to be pi squared bracket 1 minus pi all squared. So it's just that. That's, that's v squared. Now, I need to work out v u dash. So I need to do v times u dash. So I've got pi minus pi squared bracket right 368.75 minus 950 pi and I use foil so I have 368.75 pi first outside minus 950 pi squared inside minus 368.75 pi squared last plus 950 pi cubed that's v u dash. Now u v dash is going to be, right, I have got, ooh, that's a bit of a monster. So 368.75 pi minus 475 pi squared. Let's <clears throat> uh, make sure my headphones don't run out of charge. UV dash. Right, uh, 368.75 pi minus 475 pi squared minus 62.5, then times that by V dash, 1 minus 2 pi. That's UV dash, and then expand. So I've got UV dash equal to, right, 368.75 pi. Minus, right, 2 times 368.75, not 4, right, uh, 737.5. Minus 737.5 pi squared minus 475 pi squared plus 950 pi cubed minus 62.5 plus, right, 62.5 doubled is just 125 over 2, which is 125, 125 pi. Right, that's uv dash. So um, let me actually simplify that. That would help. So if we look at the pi terms first, I've got 368.75 plus five even plus one two five that gives me four nine three point seven five pi and then the pi squareds I've got minus seven three seven point five I don't want that I've got minus seven three seven point five 
take away four seven five. That is minus one two one two point five pi squared plus nine fifty pi cubed minus sixty two point five. Right, that's UV dash. Right, so I need to work out V again my derivative, I just remind you dy by d pi is v u dash take away u v dash over v squared. So that's going to give me like right, v u dash, which is this one. Um, why have I simplified that? That should be. Oh dear. That isn't fully simplified. Yeah, let me fully simplify VU dash first. So that should be ni minus 950, minus 950, take away, take away 368.75, 5 even. That gives me minus 1318.75. Right, so V U dash is three six eight point seven five pi minus one three one eight point seven five pi squared plus nine fifty pi cubed. Right, that is V U dash. Now take away U V dash minus four nine. So I'm just gonna flip the signs and I take away seven five pi plus one two one two point five pi squared minus nine fifty pi cubed plus sixty two point five all of that goes over v squared which is just pi squared one minus pi all squared <coughs> which gives me dy by d pi equals so Let's simplify these pi terms. So I have pi, pi. So I have 368.75. Take away 493.75, which gives me minus 125. So minus 125 pi. Right, minus 1318.75 pi squared. My, no, not minus 950 there. Plus one two one two point five pi squared. So I've got minus one three minus one three one eight point seven five plus one two one two point five. Right, that gives me minus hundred six point two five uh, pi squared. Nine fifty pi cubed minus nine fifty pi cubed cancels out plus 62.5 um, and that is the only constant term I believe and all of that goes over pi squared bracket 1 minus pi squared and that basically gives us the expression that we need for dy by the pi and again, we want to maximize this, so we're going to set this equal to zero and then solve for pi. So luckily, um, because this equals zero, I can multiply both sides by pi squared, bracket one minus pi squared. So that just means that I have on the left, I'm just going to put the 62.5 at the front because it looks a bit neater. Uh, 62.5 minus 125 pi minus 106.25 pi squared is just naught because if I do naught times pi squared minus pi squared back at one minus pi squared, I still get naught. And then I've got a quadratic. Now, there are various ways to solve this. Um, the first thing I'm gonna do is take everything over to the right-hand side so I have a positive coefficient of pi squared. This makes things easier. So I've got 106.25 pi squared plus 125 pi minus 62.5 is naught. I've literally just taken everything over to the right and then made the left zero. 
Now we can use the again. I'll walk you through the quadratic formula here, but realistically, you could just use Wolfram Alpha. You could use um, various equation solving software to do this. Um, I don't think you'd really be penalised for doing that because this is economics, not maths. So I don't think you'd be penalised there. But nonetheless, we will solve this analytically. Um, if I just if, if it'll actually let me make a new page anyway. That's good. Okay. Right. So, first of all, if I have a quadratic equation, that is any that's any equation. I'll do this in red again because it's peripheral to the question. Quadratic equation is ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, where a, b, and c are constants. If we have an equation of that form, and the solutions are always x equals minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So we just need to identify what those terms are in our equation. Pi is obviously x. A is obviously 106.25. B is 125. C is minus 62.5. Um, and then I just need to, so you know, obviously, let's put x squared. There you go. Um, and now I just need to substitute the numbers in. So I have um, pi is equal to minus 125, because that's what b is, plus or minus the square root of 125 all squared, minus 4 times 106.25 times minus 62.5, all over 2 times 106.25, <clears throat> and if I just put that into my calculator, so I'll put the square root, I'll just put it all in actually. So we have two solutions, one when, one when we have one, when we, one where we use the plus, one when we use the minus, okay? So pi plus, when I use the plus, is going to be, should be able to do all of it in one on a modern calculator, minus 125 plus square root 125 squared minus 4 times 106.25 times bracket minus 62.5 all over 2 times 106.25 and doing so gives me 0 0.378 to 3dp I don't know why I've used 3dp it just seems like the right thing to do here there should really be a reason um, that's what my pi plus is my pi minus is going to be the same. I would just put a minus instead of a plus here, plus or minus, minus 1.55. But that's not good anyway, because only positive solutions um, make any sense here. So I'm going to get rid of that one. So my solution there is pi is 0 0.378. So that is the premium rate that maximizes the insurance company's profit. And that basically concludes what I aim to go over in this video.